Hello and welcome to The Bookmonger. I'm John J. Miller of National Review. Thanks for listening. This show is a production of National Review and we're recording from the studio WRFH, the campus radio station of Hillsdale College. Our guest is Brad Thor, author of Backlash. Brad, once again, you've started a book by putting our hero, Scott Harvath, in a difficult predicament. How does this novel, this new novel, begin? Well, it begins with uh, a very hostile foreign government deciding Scott Harvath has foiled so many of their operations, has uh, has killed so many of their operatives, has put uh, bags over the heads of so many of their crooked diplomats that they are going to risk all-out war to come to the, to the shores of the United States and snatch him. And they want to take him back to their country, interrogate him, and then the president of their country has reserved the right to put a bullet in his head. So the book opens with the transport plane they're moving him within their country on, it goes down. And this is the one chance Harvath has to get away. And it's action from page one, and it does not let up until the very last page of the book. Now, the cover of Backlash is a bit of a throwback. It's got a hammer and sickle on it, you know, the symbol of the old Soviet Union. It looks like a Cold War spy novel. It does have that that feel. You, uh, Politico paid me a nice compliment. They added me to their 50 most influential people list, and they said because I was reinventing the Cold War thriller for a new era of conflict. So the the, the symbol you're referring to is an old Soviet uh, kind of military badge that's uh, in the snow, and some of the snow has been blown away, and it's revealing that part of it, which I think is very telling for Russia today because so much of Russia is run the same way it was when the KGB were in power. Uh, It's just a a meet the old boss, same as the new boss. The suits are just a little bit nicer. How do you wind up with a cover for a book like this? You've got to choose one every year, of course. And and what role does the author play in, 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 in picking an image? Well, it's, it's tough. We went through lots and lots and lots of uh, iterations for this cover, and this image really resonated. I'm a very visual person, so if you look at my website, any of the stuff that I put up on Twitter, it is highly stylized. It is very slick, very clean. Uh, I look at all the stuff we do, like we're putting together a magazine when it comes to all the social media and digital stuff on the website. So that's really important to me, and I have a big say in it. Probably, I probably pay more attention to that stuff, John, than most other authors do. I see absolutely crappy covers every time I'm in a bookstore or I'm on barnesandnoble.com or whatever. I, I think authors don't pay enough attention to their packaging, and it's part of the product. But I'm the son of two entrepreneurs, and so I realize that it's, I'm in show business, and it's show and it's business, and if you don't pay attention to the lessons of business, you're not going to be successful. So the cover has snow, it has this old Soviet or Russian symbol on it. A lot of the book takes place in a place called Murmansk Oblast. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but uh, where the heck is that? So Murmansk is uh, up in the northwest corner of Russia. The oblast is this. uh, It includes the Kola Peninsula, where the Russians have a big submarine base. It's right uh, along the border with Finland. And so everybody hears about Siberia all the time and how rough Siberia is. This particular area where I have the plane go down is is very remote, very dangerous, very cold. uh, And it it seemed like the perfect setting. In fact, I was talking to somebody... uh, uh, some I, in December, I happened to have a uh, meeting in uh, December before last. I was in D.C. talking about this book with people whose job it is to go out and bring Americans back who have been taken uh, hostage uh, or uh, or have disappeared in foreign countries. And I was talking to them about where I should set this. And they said, well, tell us about the plot. And I told them, and they said, okay, listen, what would probably happen if they grabbed somebody on American soil? They'd have a jet that could make it this far into Russia, and they'd need to either refuel or change planes. And they said, this is where we would do it if we were Russians uh, and we were pulling this off. And so that that helped uh, inform the setting of the book. 
You're listening to the Bookmonger production of National Review, and I want to tell you about National Review Plus with NR Plus. You get unlimited access to National Review's digital magazine. That means no paywall, all the issues in the 10-year archive, and all the podcasts. But this is more than a digital subscription. It's a membership that includes access to our members-only Facebook page, members-only conference calls with National Review writers, editors, and guests, members-only commenting on the site, and a lot fewer ads, including none within articles. To learn more, please go to nationalreview.com slash n-r-p-l-u-s brad partway through this book you have uh you have this line quote the russians wanted to enjoy the peace and prosperity of a civilized world without the encumbrances of following any of its laws unquote Uh, what do you mean by that well, Russia doesn't want to play by the rules. Uh, when you think about the breakup of the Soviet Union, and uh, Ukraine had about a third of their nuke stockpiles, and uh, we signed an agreement with the Ukrainians, and the Russians were signers on it as well, that said, if you give up the nuclear weapons here, we will guarantee your uh, your territorial integrity. We'll make sure nobody comes in and grabs land. Nobody trust us. Give up the nukes. We're going to protect you. What happened? The Russians actually annexed uh, Crimea. So they're bad actors. We see what they've attempted to do in the United States, influencing our elections, and it goes on and on and on, including, um, as you and I are doing the podcast today, they've just uh, fingered the, I forget who did it, I don't know if it was out of Ukraine, where they actually uh, made the pronouncement, but they fingered three people for the downing of that, uh, that jetliner. So they are bad, the Russians are bad actors. They are not our friends. We should not be cozy up with them, and I'm glad that the U.S. is poking around in there, you know, kind of blooding their nose a little bit uh, with cyber stuff to let them know that if they, they attempt anything else with us, they're in big trouble. So I, I remain highly concerned about the Russians. How, how big of a threat is it relative to other threats? Is it, is it a bigger threat? Is Russia a bigger threat than, than Iran or North Korea or China? I think every threat is different. So I don't look at them as, as greater or lesser. I think we have to look at them all. Uh, I, I've, been in, I've been in my share of fist fights, and I've had fights from guys that were you, you'd never think were going to be the biggest pain in your ass, who are small guys. And then there's been some bigger guys that fall quick, and they fall hard. So I don't rate them as bigger or lesser than anybody else. I, they, I look at Iran, China, North Korea, and the Russians all on an equal footing. I think they all present a unique set of challenges, and uh, we have to be very, very careful uh, on how it's handled. Uh, and that starts with the, for, with the foreign policy front. I mean, Russia would love nothing more than to see NATO broken up, NATO weakened, uh, and we get mixed messages out of the White House back to Russia. Now, maybe that keeps the Russians guessing. I don't know, but I don't think that's the strategy. I, I think it's kind of the, the, the blind guys fumbling along the elephant trying to figure out what they're, what they're touching in the dark. What, what, what do you think Russia wants? What, are they, what, what is their purpose here? Well, I think Putin has been very clear about what he wants. He wants to reassemble the the greatness of Russia. So he wants to get back uh, territory and things like this. It's it's why one of my biggest concerns has been uh, the Article 5 treaty in NATO, in that there hasn't been, with this particular administration, enough support of that, you know, an attack on one NATO member is an attack on all, because I could see Putin trying uh, trying to create some pretense for taking Latvia, Lithuania, or Estonia, and I don't think after all the years of war in Afghanistan and Iraq, Americans have the, the, the stomach to defend a tiny nation that the majority of citizens in this country can't finger on a map. Brad, your, your stories are so contemporary. They're, they're ripped from the headlines, as, uh, as, as people say. And, and you have a new novel comes out every summer. We always podcast. It's always a great conversation. Do you right now know what your next novel will be about, at least in, in the, the contours of it, what, what, what the geopolitical subject of it will be a year from now in 2020? Well, I, I, I'm starting to put it together. Uh, these things, it's, it's like reading tea leaves. Uh, there, there are certain avenues that I absolutely do not 
pursue, because I want people to pick up any of my novels at any point and say, wow, this is evergreen. This feels like it could happen tomorrow. So I, I avoid some of the, the in-depth detail stuff. Like I knew guys that wrote about bin Laden in their thrillers, and I said, you're insane. <laughs> at, one po- at some point, we're going to catch him or we're going to kill him, and then your novel, nobody will want to read your book because nobody wants to read a book about bin Laden because they know how it ends. <laughs> so it, it is, it's a bit of a high-wire act, John. Uh, but, yeah, I've got some broad brushstrokes about what I'm thinking about for, for next year, but that could change as, uh, as uh, things on the global stage change. Last question. We're almost out of time. Earlier in our conversation, you mentioned your website. Uh, tell us about your website. What can people find there, and, and how can our listeners uh, track it down? So uh, my website is Brad, B-R-A-D, Thor, T-H-O-R, dot com. Uh, so there's not only information about the books, but I put a lot of stuff in there, uh, stuff I've discovered while I'm researching the books, because I call what I do faction, where you don't know where the facts end and the fiction begins. The, I, my books have short, crisp, cinematic chapters. I want you to take it to the beach, take it to the pool, but then I want you to come to the website and just have these really quick, fun kind of little bits and pieces that add to your enjoyment of all my thrillers. The author is Brad Thor. The book is Backlash. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to leave a review on iTunes. Your reviews help new listeners discover us, and that helps us keep this show going. We'll be back next week with a new episode of The Bookmonger.